And now the congregation of the First National Church of Bill and Ted will come to order. All rise for today's speaker, Matt. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. You may be seated. Today I would like to talk to you about those two great rules. Be excellent to each other. I hear our brother Ted has outlined for us exactly how we should treat each other. Not just good, not fine, not apathetically. Excellent. Be excellent to each other. Treat each other as good as you possibly can. Because, my friends, everyone wants to live in a world that is excellent. Everyone wants to be treated excellently. And it does you quite good to treat each other that way. It does a person good to help another. And someday, maybe, that excellence will come back to you. And of course, party on, dudes. I'll uh, hear our brother Bill has reminded us how finite life is. You know, we have to take the time to enjoy the pleasures of it while we can. Uh, for what does man seek more than his own happiness? You know, party on, dudes. Does not have to be a literal party. You know, uh, company is nice, of course, but if you're reading a book, or you learn a new skill, or you're helping other people, and that makes you happy, then it's a party in its own right. Party on, dudes. Of course, it's important to remember which order these instructions came in. Be excellent to each other was first. Party on was second. For you see, my friends, your party cannot come at the expense of someone else's party. Because if all man is built for is to enjoy life, then surely the only sin in this world would be to rob a man of that happiness. See, my friends, where one of us cannot party, none of us can party. You must be excellent first and party on second. And with that, my congregation, be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Today's episode, Bill and Ted, the Animated Series. Hello dudes, I'm called Matt, and welcome to the month of animation, where I sit on my couch and I watch cartoons based on movies that really didn't need kids' cartoons based on them. Now sure, Bill and Ted is not... Rambo or the Toxic Avenger, it's a lot tamer than a lot of the movies I talk about, but still, it's clearly going for an older audience than the type of people who watch Saturday morning cartoons, you know? It's a raunchy teen comedy, not a show for nine-year-olds. Also, I just obviously love Bill and Ted, so yeah, I wanted to talk about it. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures premiered in 1990, one year after the film, on CBS from Hanna-Barbera. It ran for what was technically two seasons, but is more like two different series, before being readapted into a live-action series. The less said about that, the better. Your stepmom is such an incredible babe. Shut up, Ted. Never seen her in a bikini before. She's given me a full-on chubby. Shut up, Ted! So between season one and season two, the show was sold to Fox and it changed animation studios to Deke Entertainment. The budget was slashed and most of the cast and crew were replaced. Which would be odd either way, but it's especially strange for this show since season one had a lot of returning cast members from the movie, which was very unusual for an animated series. They got Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves to reprise their role, but... It was 1990, it's not like they were up to much. But they managed to get George Carlin to voice Rufus. 
Imagine that, a Hanna-Barbera cartoon starring George Carlin. Hell, I think George Carlin has more dialogue in this episode of the show than he does in all of Bill and Ted's bogus journey. They also managed to get some decent guest stars, including Little Richard, may he rest in peace. You will be more famous than Chad Allen. I can live with that. But what I need is enough money to make a new record. My point is, season one rocks, don't watch season two. Today we'll be looking at the series premiere, one sweet and sour Chinese adventure to go. So let's find out if this series is excellent or bogus. This is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. The show begins with a theme song that's... eh. Bill and Ted! Bogus! Adventures most outstanding every day. It's outrageous, so bodacious, help is always on the way! It's not the worst thing, but I expected something with a little more rock and roll to it for Bill and Ted, you know? Episode 1 begins with the Wild Stallions practicing in their garage. On crappy guitars, not the nice ones they got at the end of the movie. Anyways, Mr. Preston gets upset at how loud they're playing. Actually, Bill, we could hear you boys quite well from the kitchen. Outstanding! Are you kidding? This stuff is so loud, people can hear you in Australia. Excellent, Mike! And the sense of humor is consistent with the movie? What is this, a good series? He and Missy, I mean, Mrs. Preston, go to the store, and while they're away, Bill and Ted play so loud they knock their brand new Chinese vase onto the ground. I am totally depressed that Circle K does not sell antique Chinese vases. Um, that's not a Circle K. That's the unbranded, legally distinct, cozy corner. You know, I've never been to a Circle K. They opened one pretty recently near where I work. I've just never been inside. Maybe worth taking a look at. Thus, the boys decide to visit ancient China to get a new vase, but bump into Rufus. In the 27th century, there's no such thing as thick crust. How can a supposedly advanced society not have thick crust pizza? The superior type of pizza. Both in terms of taste and in terms of practicality, I live in one of the windiest places in the U.S. If I order thin crust, it's just gonna blow away. Also, this joke doesn't make much sense. Hey! I said no anchovies! Like, first off, he did not pay for that pizza. At the very least, he should have to sign for it. But secondarily, no pizza place is going to put anchovies on your pizza by default. Like, pizza places hate dealing with anchovies, to the point that Pizza Hut has discontinued them. Uh, it, it makes the oven smell bad, and God help you and your car if you're the delivery driver that has to deliver an anchovy pizza. That shit reeks. If you order anchovies on your pizza, you go to hell before you die. Now, the movie, for a silly stoner comedy, was fairly historically accurate. Like, the people they met spoke their foreign languages, not English. And there was nothing too anachristic about it. The show, on the other hand, plays it much sillier, which I guess makes sense for a cartoon. We thought China was supposed to be totally crowded. Give us a few hundred years. They attempt to buy a vase, but accidentally destroy an entire store of pottery. And as punishment, they're sentenced to... Build the Great Wall of China? Which they do? Not bad for a couple days' work. Uh, in the movie, time keeps moving in present-day San Dimas. So a few days have passed and no one's noticed Bill and Ted are gone? Then again, I never understood that rule. It seems contrived to give the characters a ticking clock. They have a time machine, just go back to exactly when you left. The great Kublai Khan will know how to fix it. Wait, Kublai Khan? Kublai Khan was way after the Great Wall of China was built. Also, Bill and Ted get into a restaurant that Rufus can't get into without a reservation? How did they get a reservation? They've been busy building the Great Wall. Luckily, he gets them a message in the form of a fortune cookie, informing them that their phone booth is at the Khan's castle. 
Unfortunately, the con gives the booth to Marco Polo as a gift to Italy. Just wait! With today's special, you get a free vase. That's... convenient. But somehow Bill and Ted get kidnapped onto Marco Polo's boat, and Marco Polo keeps singing? I'm the captain, I'm the captain of the ship, sailing somewhere in the middle of the China Sea. Yeah. Is that... Something Marco Polo did? They find the TARDIS, but accidentally wake up Marco Polo, who punishes them. Dudes, just get in the phone booth and leave. It's right there. Also, why would you make people paint the boat while you're still at sea? Then a shark sinks their boat, and they have to use the phone booth to get to Italy, where the king gets mad at them for flooding his castle. But Ted gives him some noodles, thus starting Italy's pasta craze. Whoa, Bill! We had better get back, as Missy Mom will be home any minute. Wait, now you're addressing that time moves in San Dimas? You've been gone for at least a week, if not more. So they get home with the vase and break it. Turns out Missy Mom got it from a Chinese restaurant for free. Whoa! How totally ironic! And that's Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, Episode 1. It's not that bad, actually. This is kind of exactly what you'd expect. It keeps a lot of the tone from the movie, but plays the scenarios a lot goofier and more cartoony. Which makes sense, it's a cartoon. I'm impressed, both with how good the show is and how it manages to get back the original actors. This is really best case scenario when it comes to the animated adaptations. It obviously has problems, but I can live with it. The animation's good, the voice talent's good, and it made me laugh. What more could you want? And now I want to go to Circle K. Uh, if you liked this video, maybe uh, consider looking at that Toxic Crusaders review. And uh, till next time, be excellent to each other. One question for you. What is it, Ted? What color is an orange? Ted, you bonehead. Its color is the same as its name, just like a lemon. This better be excellent. Credits do. There is a sink. Final verdict. Uh, Circle K is a gas station. Not even a very good gas station. I'd, I'd probably use Quick Trip or uh, 7 Eleven before I came back here. Four out of five.